Becoming an adult comes with a lot of questions which made me feel really stressed. Which job is right for me? How can I make money? What am I here for? I discovered the world of filmmaking at a very young age, to be exact, at the age of 12. Ever since I got my first camera, it was glued to my hands and I headed out every single day to create videos. Filmmaking sparked an excitement in me which I couldn't get from any other activity. I was truly passionate about it. But still, towards the end of high school, I spent less and less time making videos. It felt like being a filmmaker was simply no option for a feasible career path and that's why I decided to drop it. I didn't create videos for two years, but luckily after a year of traveling, I found back to my passion for filmmaking and made the decision to give this a shot. I'm not gonna lie, it has been a long way to get here, but looking back, this decision truly changed my life forever. While I was able to work through the struggles of finding my calling pretty early on, the story of my friend Matt is different. When Matt was a kid, he created stupid videos just like me. Skating, surfing, stupid sketches, you name it. But after graduating from high school, Matt went down a completely different path and studied accounting. Deep down, he still loved to create videos, but when his grades started to suffer from it, he felt like a loser without any direction. So he told himself to finally grow up and decided to sell all of his camera gear. Fast forward five years later, he had a master's degree in finance and landed a top job at the world's leading brand strategy consulting firm in London. From the outside, it seemed like he had reached everything anyone could ever want, but on the inside, he felt miserable and empty. That's why one year ago, at the age of 27, Matt made the hardest decision of his life and quit his job in order to pursue a career in filmmaking. My biggest fear back then was being trapped in a job that I don't like, which is exactly what happened to Matt. And after hearing his story for the first time, it sparked a question in my head which occupied my mind ever since. Is it ever too late to follow your passion? Okay, so I actually got to know Matt only a few weeks ago here in Cape Town. It all started with an Instagram DM where he asked me if I wanted to join him wakeboarding. And as you know, I'm an extremely talented wakeboarder, so obviously I said yes and we headed out on his brother's boat for sunrise. Unlike me, Matt was actually good at wakeboarding and he pulled off one flip after another. All in all, we had a great time together and towards the end I found out that he only started to get into professional filmmaking recently. Well, fast forward one week later, both of us found ourselves at the airport, ready to embark onto one of the coolest adventures I've been on since I'm here in Cape Town. So it is 6 in the morning and we're going on a plane. Dude, I'm excited for this. As it turned out, Matt was currently working on a video project for a safari game reserve and he asked me if I wanted to help him capture some footage of the wild animals. As you can imagine, I was obviously down for it and I also brought along my two flatmates, Gaston and Gabriel. Yo, we are here. Dude, it is so freaking hot out here. Thank you. <laughs> Whoa. Hello, Gabriel. Hi, Nicholas. Hello, Nicholas. <laughs> that lodge is crazy beautiful. <laughs> What, what are you doing there? We're looking for giraffe, dude. <laughs> does it actually help? It does, because you only focus on that point. So you're ah, okay, okay. Yeah, it is. There it is, it's another one. After a day of fooling around and checking out the absolutely gorgeous rooms, on the next morning, it was time to head out into the wild for our first game drive. So, we got up really early and just drove on top of this small hill in order to catch sunrise. It's not looking too promising, but uh, you can actually hear all of the wildlife uh, waking up right now. So that's kind of cool. But uh, I quickly wanted to touch on something else, which is my experience of growing up and kind of like having the pressure to really find a career path. Oy. I think it's just really funny and interesting how 
early you can tell what children are excited and passionate about but still so many of these children end up having very very different jobs down the road and I think that this is because of the pressure that we have in our society. When I approached the end of high school and I got close to graduating and like choosing a major for university there was just so much pressure around me because I think it's an overall stigma in our society that you can't really make a living from a creative job. That's why I thought that like yeah okay I won't be able to earn enough money to sustain a, a healthy lifestyle if I choose to go into filmmaking. It's a pity that our society thinks like that because especially at that age you don't really have the confidence to to just shape your own opinion because obviously you didn't see anything of the world you don't have any experience and you can't talk about that and especially for that reason your opinion is just shaped by the opinion of your peers or of the people you look up to like for example your parents other people who are already successful and I just found out that like not always those opinions are the right ones for you these people really just try to avoid risks and really just try to look for the secure path like they just try to recommend you what the average person does because they know that this has proven to make people money let's say but honestly all of us are individuals all of us have something different we are burning for and that's why there's not just this like one solution for everybody but that's why everybody has to kind of find their own way uh, I just remember it back then when I was 16 I was probably the only guy of my friend group who was really really concerned with that question what am I going to do after high school yeah that just really brought me into kind of like a deep hole of yeah I would say a little bit of depression where I was crying a lot of times because I was just completely overwhelmed of how to deal with that question so one thing I realized over the last years is that it's extremely helpful to talk to an experienced person who understands your struggles and helps you navigate through those tough times. And that brings us to the sponsor of today's video, which is BetterHelp. BetterHelp is the world's largest online therapy service and I've been using their platform for the last four months. Every week I have a live video call with my therapist Jamie where we talk about the different mental issues I'm facing and how I can solve them. Ever since I started doing this, I saw a huge improvement when it comes to my mental health and also I just feel like I became a lot better when it comes to making the right decisions in various areas of my life and yeah I honestly think that being able to talk to a therapist would have massively helped my 16 years old me to just see the whole situation a lot more clearly and probably it would have also helped me to not fall into that dark hole. The great thing about BetterHelp is that it is completely online. After signing up you will get matched with a therapist in less than 48 hours and besides the weekly live sessions you also always have the option of sending a message to your therapist whenever you feel like it. So BetterHelp is not a crisis line or self-help but it is professional therapy done securely online and if you yourself are currently facing a big mental block which is holding you back from being happy or you simply just want to improve your mental health then make sure to head over to betterhelp.com nicholas and then you will get 10% off your first month. Actually, I have been on a safari already, but that was 10 years ago when I was out with uh, my father, my brother and my stepmother in Namibia and in Botswana. Yeah, I just remember that as probably the point where I really fell in love with filmmaking because there I just realized how differently you can see the world through a lens and I, I just have very good memories of that safari and it's super sick to kind of like 10 years later now come back to a safari and yeah shoot again but now obviously on like super different equipment how many drones do we have with us two three four I think we have four or five drones I'm just really stoked to shoot together with the others um, let's see what what kind of shots we can get hey That is some proper 4x4. This makes me almost as motion sick as my first time in the FPV simulator. They just left us alone, man. <laughs> the next thing I know, I'm just standing in the middle of the reserve with Nick. 
<laughs> that's definitely not legit. <laughs> that's not safe. I quickly also wanted to talk about your experience back then. Like when you were approaching the time where you kind of like had to choose a major for studying. What was going through your head back then? What kind of like struggles did you face? Going straight from school, it was never even a thought or an option for me to go and do something like filmmaking or anything in the creative space. Yeah. You basically had to go from school, get into a good university and get into a good course so that's literally exactly what I did and the degree that I studied was the people who are respected at school are basically just followed in their footsteps and studied the same degree just like followed the stream in that sense even though I was so so different to those people I still respected them so I kind of wanted to be like them and yeah I didn't really take myself into consideration there it was just never really an option for you to actually make money from filmmaking or it was just like the expectations from your family wouldn't match with like what you wanted to do I think that sums up both sides quite well yeah. because there was the expectation side from the family and the people that I knew and then there was the other side where I just thought there's no way as I can make enough money. Bro, I'm just gonna switch hands <laughs> man, my hand falls off. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you like worry. How were the first years in university then? Like how did you feel from the beginning and how did it kind of like evolve over the years? So when I first got to uni, yeah I, I guess that was just exciting and the freedom, obviously I'm not at school anymore and I don't have to go to lectures so I yeah. didn't really go to lectures. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that allowed me to like go film surfing again with my friends, just film like BMX videos. So basically you were not even excited about the university, but you no, were not just more all. like excited like, about like kind of like the free time besides it to create more videos. Videos were like my identity. Like yeah. I was one of the first guys to get a drone in yeah. SA. So I was always known as like the drone guy. <laughs> so it was like such a strong part of my identity. But I mean, my uni definitely, I didn't feel connected to it at all. Well, I find it kind of crazy that you then still were able to pull all the way through because I know myself, I'm a, I'm a guy who really needs to be passionate about what I do or else I'm just gonna die or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like when did you realize that this was not for you? I mean, unfortunately, I only realized five months before I quit my job because I yeah. was just like, I've done so much work. I've got so many things that were supposed to make me happy. Yeah. And I'm like miserable. So I went through the whole way thinking eventually I'm going to just be satisfied with it. I'm going to get that degree and then I'm going to be satisfied. Okay, I need to get one more degree, then I'm going to be cool. And then it's like, yeah. get this next job that surely will do the trick and nothing yeah, just yeah, the yeah, trick. Yeah, yeah. And then I was chatting to someone, I was, I was chatting to a therapist as well. And they were like, you hate your job so much. So what job would you do? And I said, like, I would love to start a production company. That, that definitely can't happen. Like, that's ridiculous. Yeah, and they were just like, yeah. why? Why is that ridiculous? And I was like, well, that's not a real job. Because that's kind of what had been programmed into me as a child. Yeah. And then that got me thinking, like, fuck, why is it ridiculous? Yeah. yeah. I 100% relate to that, where you just kind of, like, chase from one goal to the next one. And you think, like, this is going to do the trick. But honestly, it is never like that. I think <laughs> you really have to enjoy the process in order to, to be happy long term. Definitely, yeah. like, without a question. Throughout our different game drives, I was so thrilled to see how excited and passionate each of us in our group was about filmmaking. It's so crazy to me that each of us has such a different story and how we still all ended up finding a job we truly love. Gaston was born in Argentina and therefore probably had the worst starting point to become a filmmaker. Gabriel spent the majority of his time working on a social media marketing agency which never truly fulfilled him and now he also starts his own YouTube channel. And out of all, Matt devoted so many years of his life to fulfill the expectations of the people he looked up to without even realizing that he is the master of his own destiny. Seeing how their eyes lit up when they grabbed their camera made me quite emotional. It felt like after so many years of suffering and the amount of effort we put into fundamentally changing our mindsets, we finally arrived where we were supposed to be. So we're currently in search for some lions. <laughs> I'm not sure if that helps with lions, eh? <laughs> Honestly, Gabriel, this is absolutely nothing. He thought that one of these things was a lion. <laughs> Wait, yeah, well done! What? Yo, there are some lions. No way, we found them. I just saw tracks in, I was like, no, it can't be. They're just chilling on the side of the road. That was easy, eh? <laughs> what? <laughs> This is insane. This is the closest I've ever been to these animals. What do you think, Ben? It's insane. 
kind of scary. <laughs> she would never just like run at me right now and just like jump on the vehicle. Uh, no, no, not unless you really made an effort to get her attention, like waving your arms about. Yeah, yeah, okay. Like that. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> She's looking at us now. Too. <laughs> I would love to know if we left our chat. <laughs> like, left I'm wondering if they're good. coming back. Yeah, man, we're just left with like giraffes and some zebras here. As I told you before, man, I have a lot of respect for the decision you made because I think it's just a really common mindset that as soon as you invest a lot of time into one specific area or one career path, you can't really return or you can't really explore another path. And I think that is just like a completely wrong mindset because obviously you have to try out a lot of different things and a a lot of different paths until you actually find one that kind of suits you and I think that's just like a common thing in our society right that you just got to pick your path and then you got to stick to it <laughs> and the longer you like stay on that path the more you feel like there's no return yeah I think it's just really cool that like after so many years of investing time into that you were still able to just kind of like step out of it and just make your own decision to to just kind of like follow the thing that makes you happy yeah no thanks Nick it, yeah. it means a lot coming from you. you you just need to like actually like what you said is just not give a fuck about what anyone things because at the time when I quit my job I'm thinking okay I'm 27 my mates are like three years four years into their jobs they're getting yeah. promotions like one of my best mates became a director of one of the accounting firms like, I've literally just quit my job so I'm almost like back at zero and then I'm reaching out to guys that are 23 and I'm 27 yeah. and it's like you just need to get over that in your head those years these are not lost years I think like all of these yeah. years that you spent there it's just like a massive life lesson it will just always remind you to just stick to the things you love and stick to your passion instead yeah. of like going for the things that other people expect of you yeah Nick I think like that's a crucial part of it is not to be resentful about that period and label it as wasted time because yeah. firstly the past can't change like it, it is what it is yeah. and secondly I probably wouldn't have got to the place where I'm at now and know myself so well yeah. if I didn't get pushed down that path if you look at it as wasted time you're going to make yourself resentful and that's really not going to help you yeah, yeah, yeah. Super, super cool to chat with you about it. I think my hand is going to fall off, so that's why <laughs> we're just going to, to look Gosh. for the others. Hopefully we'll find them again. I think we all can agree that Matt's life changed for the better ever since he made that decision one year ago. It surely hasn't been an easy decision and it took him a lot of courage to take that step, but I know that it was worth it. I've met so many different people with all kinds of jobs and you can tell in seconds whether or not they enjoy showing up for work each day. They radiate such a positive energy around them and it reflects onto everything they do. Their mental health, their success, their beauty and most of all the people around them. I know that the expectations of our society push you to suppress that deep feeling inside you over and over again, but trust me, one day it is going to catch up with you and you'll ask yourself why you didn't act on it earlier. Oh shit, no, no. There are some elephants over there. If you look back here, there are some more. <laughs> look at this. <laughs> I think that Matt is the living proof that it's never too late to follow your passion. No matter how much time you've invested into a career path which was fueled by external expectations, there is always a way to change something about it. No matter if you're about to finish high school, just started your studies or worked in a joyless job for years, in the end it's always up to you to make the call and work towards your biggest goals. The longer you stay on a path which doesn't fulfill you, the more years you're going to regret later on in life. And that's why I think it is so important to not strive for the validation of other people or for money, but to listen to your heart and give it a shot. Or in Matt's words, the life I had been given is not a rehearsal for some future life and I constantly remind myself to drop the act and strive for authenticity rather than applause. We saw so many animals, the sun is just setting, we're drinking a beer and in the back here two more elephants are just appearing. Man, this is beautiful. This is really, really beautiful. <laughs>
So guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I think it was a really cool adventure and I hope that by sharing Matt's story, I motivated some of you guys to also just really go for the things you want and not stick to a traditional path, even if you have invested a lot of time into it. Yeah, also a quick shout out to Kareja Game Reserve. This place has been really, really nice. You see in the back here, the lodge, the rooms are amazing. The service is outstanding. And also obviously Reese, our game driver, was an absolute legend. Uh, so tons of amazing amazing animals so if you ever consider to come to South Africa this is the place to go for a safari you will find a link in the description thanks to you man thanks thanks, thanks for sharing your story man I think it was, it was so really really fun. cool if you want to check out uh, Matt's channel as well you can also find a link to that in the description and that's it for today I'm going to see you guys in the next one peace out bye bye